All right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you going? It's the Average Garage here today. I'm Rowan, I'm gonna run you through the rebuild of the Barra. So today we're starting a new series of rebuilding the Barra, and I've painted the block, I've painted the rocker cover. Um, obviously the motor's all stripped down. If you haven't seen that, check the episodes down below. I've also already rebuilt the oil pump, uh, which I will tie into this series as well. But for now, we're starting the new series, rebuilding the Barra, so let's get to it. All right, so when it comes to core plugs, you wanna make sure both surfaces are dead clean. So that's why I'm scuffing the surface with 400 grit sandpaper or wet and dry. So what I'm doing is I'm just clearing any contaminants, uh, giving it something, the sealer something to bite onto and making sure there's no old sealer left. So once you've done that, you wanna add your semi-drying sealant. So I'm using the Worth Motorplast, um, but any other aviation gasket sealant or uh, a semi-drying sealant will work. You don't want to put a ton on, but you want to make sure you have a thin smear on each surface. You'll see I put too much in the first core plug I did, but I then wiped some out because there was excess there. Once you've done that, you just want to find the appropriate size socket and you want to tap the core plug into place. You want to make sure that the core plug goes in just enough so it passes the little bevel on the side of the core plug or the entrance to the core plug hole. Once you pass that bevel, the core plug's in far enough and then you can move on to the next one. So all the core plugs are in and they're done. So now we can move on to sorting out the dipstick tube. So because I've converted from an FG sump to a BABF sump, the dipstick tube was at the rear of the block and now it's at the front. Luckily, I have a Mark I FG block. So they have the provision for the dipstick in both places. But otherwise, you do have to custom drill a hole and it becomes a bit of a pain. I've got to knock a plug out of the front hole and move it to the back hole and make sure that's all sealed up and I'll use the exact same sealant for that as well. So yeah, we'll punch that out, put it in the right spot, and then that'll be the dipstick hole sorted for now. Looking at it, I may need to get a different dipstick. I might need a B-series dipstick, but we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Oh. 
was the blank hole, that was where the FG dipstick was, and this was the plugged hole. So I've knocked the plug out from the top, and then I've put some sealant on it and put it back in the FG hole. So that should be nice and sealed out. I shouldn't have any oil leaks, but I'm also probably gonna put a rubber bung in there, just to make it look a bit fancier, um, and just stop it filling with dirt. Now this hole I will clean up, and I yeah, I'm probably gonna have to source a BABF dipstick. The height between where the sump meets and where this dipstick hole is, is quite a bit taller, probably about two centimeters or an inch taller than the FG size. So yeah, I'll um, source that and then we'll sort that out. But for now, we will clean this hole up and then progress onto measuring the piston rings. All right, so we're up to the piston rings now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep each piston ring that I uh, fit and check and if I have to file down, on a piece of uh, clean paper down there, just so I know that they can stay with their respective cylinders. So you're gonna squeeze the ring just a little bit, plonk it in the bore here, and then you're gonna, with the piston, you're just gonna push it down about an inch or so, just so it's nice and square. Maybe a bit more than an inch. And then you're gonna check it with the feeler gauges. So I need a minimum of 24 thou for this top ring, which is 0.61 mil. So you're just gonna use the feeler gauge and try and just gently wiggle it into that groove and it ain't going. So just to check, I'm gonna put 21 thou in it. Shoot down a bit further. All right, so we're at 18 thou. If you don't have access to a ring filer system or a machine, you can use a file in the vise like I am here. Make sure you try and get the ends as a nice flush 90 degrees and make sure they are as flat as possible to each other. Also, you wanna follow it up with a small file to deburr the edges. Also, when you do this, make sure you file from the outside of the ring to the inside so as you don't crack or chip the cromoly coating as that can score the cylinder. If you have any dramas, don't be afraid to contact your local engine machinist or engine builder and ask them for their advice. So when you're filing the rings, you wanna keep on checking the rings over and over again as you're filing. So keep note of how much you file off and how much difference that makes. So it gives you a sort of gauge of how much you're gonna be filing each time. So I used 10 passes of the file and each time I pulled the ring out and that usually took just under a thou off. Uh, you wanna make sure the feeler gauges slides into the gap quite nicely. You don't want them to really fall in, like they shouldn't be loose in the gap but you also shouldn't have to force them in the gap. A tiny little wiggle is okay. It will take quite a while to do each one and you just don't wanna get complacent and file too much. So as you can see in this time lapse, you can see just how much time it takes. But once you get that measurement right, that ring is done and you should be sweet to go. Alright guys, so I forgot to record the second rings, but I'm on the second rings now, the second compression rings. So up here, I've started laying them out. So I've got first cylinder, second cylinder, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. So there's two rings on the first two because I've already done them. I've just finished the third one. So I'm just laying them in order so at least I know which cylinder they belong to. And yeah, we're going to... Keep cracking on with this. I'll stick you back on the time lapse because it is time consuming. But these second rings, I'm pretty sure they're cast iron. They are very easy to file through. So take your time with these ones because it is a lot easier to screw them up. 
Also, a super quick note is these second compression rings are gapped to 22,000, not 24,000. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. I've done the top two compression rings. Now I've called my engine builder and apparently there's not much you can do about the oil ring, so or the oil control rings and the scraper. So they came in at 40,000, so I'm gonna double check them with who supplied the rings as well. Just make sure I'm double and triple checking everything I can. So the rings are all up there laid out, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go over them all once again, just with the file and just make sure there are no burrs and there's no sharp edges that are gonna stop them from rotating or doing what they need to do, or that's going to score the cylinder. So I'm gonna leave you with it for there. We're gonna end the episode. If you've liked this episode and found it helpful, please hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button to stay up to date with the latest videos, because in the next episode, we will be flipping this block upside down. We're putting the main bearings in and the big end bearings. We're gonna put new rod, uh, rod bolts in, and we're gonna get the plastic gauge out and start measuring all the bottom end. So the bottom end will be going together in the next episode. So stay tuned and we'll see you all then. Peace out guys, see you later.